Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we will continue solving problems uh, related to logarithms today. Um, just a little bit more difficult maybe than the previous lectures. Um, obviously, it's part of the course, so you can't really start from here. You have to go, go from the very beginning, listen to the lectures, first couple of problem-solving lectures, and then we will proceed to this one. All right, so um, one more comment. Um, you definitely have to try to, to solve these problems yourself first. Go to the unizor.com. The comments for this lecture contain old problems, so try to solve them uh, yourself. Only after that, listen to this particular lecture. Uh, and one more detail. In many cases, um, we are expressing the solution to uh, some equation, let's say, um, not as a number in some kind of a representation um, related to either integer number or, let's say, decimal number. No, there are other representations of the numbers. For instance, this is also a number. Now, obviously, we can approximate this number with some uh, decimal um, uh, notation, 1.4, blah, 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 etc. But this is the number in its own right. So if the solution to equation is written, uh, is written as this or as this, this is it. These are final forms. Same thing um, applies to logarithms. Sometimes we can say that the result of the equation, the, the solution of the, to the equation is something like well, this is a number. You don't have to express it in any better form. There is no better form for this one. I mean, if, if, if it's something like this, you, you, you can't express it better, because you know that 3 squared would give you 9, which means that this is, which is an exponent, 3 should be raised into to get, uh, to get 9, then you know this is 2. This is definitely better. So this is not a, um, an appropriate, so to speak, form of solution. But this is, because it cannot be any simpler than that. Unless you start approximating with decimal numbers, etc., but we're not talking about this, and these are not really representing a true solution. If solution is this, any kind of a decimal representation would probably be just an approximation, not the exact solution. Okay. Having said all that, we will try to solve a few equations. All right. Equation number one. 5 to 2x minus 5 minus 2x minus 2 is equal to 0. All right. This unusually looking equation is really a relatively simple one. And here is why. You know that something like this is actually representable as this. Or, alternatively, as this. So, power to the power um, is basically a multiplication of powers. So you know this. Therefore, 5 to the 2x can be represented as 5 to the x to the 2. Now, now we will use a, a, a special technique which we can call a substitution. What if we will substitute a new variable called y, which is actually 5 to the uh, power of x? If I will be able to find y, then obviously x is log y base 5, right? So, which power should I raise 5 to get y? Well, this is the power. So, why did I do this? Why did I do this substitution? Well, for a very simple reason. Since 5 to the power 2x is 5 to the x squared, 5 to the x I have uh, substituted as y, I can 
uh, rewrite this equation as y squared minus 5 to the x is y minus 2 is equal to 0, which is a regular quadratic equation, which everybody knows how to uh, solve this equation. Now, um, obviously, solutions are minus 1 and 2. Now, are these both solutions good if I consider this? Obviously not, because 5 to the power of x, this is an exponential function. It has only positive um, values, which means this we have to completely reject. This is not a candidate for our solution. But this is good, so I can always say that x is equal to log 2 base 5. And that's the answer. Next, log base 2 of x minus 2 plus log base 2 of x plus 3 is equal to log 2 x plus 10. Okay, this is a logarithmic uh, um, equation, and uh, for obvious reason, we can use this property of logarithms. Log A of B times C is equal to log base A of B plus log base A of C. So, you know this property of logarithms. We can use it here. B would be x minus 2. C would be x plus, three, uh, x plus 3. So on the left, we will have log 2 of x minus 2 come, uh, times x plus 3. That's what's on the left. On the right, we have log 2 x plus 10. Now, is it better than this? Oh, it's much better, obviously. Now, uh, if the logs are equal with the same base, then the expressions under the log are supposed to be equal as well. Because, as you remember, logarithm is a one-to-one -one correspondence between its domain and its um, range. So the only thing we have to really be concerned about um, that the domain for log is actually only positive numbers. So we have to really be very careful when we will get rid of the logarithms. Because what we get rid, we will get x minus 2 times x plus 3 equals to x plus 10. But we should not forget that this should be greater than 0 and this should be greater than 0. So in in addition to this particular equation, which is obviously a quadratic equation, we also have to say that x minus 2 times x plus 3 should be greater than 0, and x plus 10 should be greater than 0. So these are restrictions on whatever the roots of this particular equation we can find. All right, so let's, let's do this, and let's do it carefully. Thinking, always thinking about the proper domain. Now, this one gives me x squared minus 2x plus 3x, it's plus x minus 6 equals x plus 10. Uh, obviously, this is reduced. This is x minus, so x squared of net, x squared is equal to 16, x. 1 equals 4, x2 equals minus 4. So that's what we've got from this quadratic equation. Now, how about this? Well, let's try. 4, obviously this is greater than 0, and this is greater than 0. Minus 4. 
minus 4 minus 2 is minus 6 times minus 1 it's 6 and x plus 10 is also 6 so it's also fine so in both cases in both cases both uh, roots of this equation both solutions are satisfying these conditions these inequalities which must be applied to make sure that the whole logarithms make sense however I did actually skip one particular step and which is you see I have already started solving the second um, equation when I have log of x minus 2 times x plus 3 but original equation has them separately. So not only this, but actually I have, I, I have to apply separately x plus 2 should be greater than 0 and, uh, I, uh, sorry, minus. And x plus 3 should be greater than 0. So if I really apply my domain um, uh, restrictions to the original equation, not the one which I've got like intermediary one, I have a little bit more strict conditions. And if you will check it now, this one is satisfying, but this one doesn't satisfy this, which means this is not a true solution to our original equation. Because then, this particular logarithms, uh, logarithm would, no, not this one, yeah, actually, yes, both. Both would be negative, so both would not really exist and cannot be a solution. So I have only one solution, which is 4. Okay, done this. So jumping to quick solutions in these cases is really kind of uh, not really advisable. So you really have to think about original equation and its original um, domain of whatever uh, restrictions it, it, it's, uh, uh, it puts on the variables. So next one, 4 to the power of square root of x is equal to 256. Okay, obviously x should be greater than 0, otherwise the square root would not exist. Now, uh, obviously, the first thing which we can do is we can convert 256 into 4, into which degree? Uh, square is 16, uh, cube is 64, so it's the fourth degree, 4 to the fourth degree. So, 4 to the power of square root of x is equal to 4 to the fourth degree. And, as, you, as we know, um, since uh, exponential function uh, establishes one-to-one -one correspondence, if function values are equal, then the arguments must be equal. So square root of x is equal to 4, and x is equal to 16. That's the solution, and it satisfies our original uh, inequality x greater than 0 actually x can be greater or equal to 0 in this case but since we have obtained a 16 as a solution that's okay now 4 to the power x plus 3 minus 2 power x plus 2 is equal to 14 all right uh, well, we obviously notice this is two, this is four, which is two square. So we can always write it as two to the power of two, and then to the power of x plus three, right? Which is actually multiplication, which is two to the power two x plus six. I have to multiply this exponential uh, expression by by this. Exponents are multiplied. So that's how I can represent this, which is good. Now, this has 2x plus 6. This has x plus 2. 
So again, it's not exactly like our first equation, 5 to the power 2x and 5 to the x, when we can substitute 5 to the x as y squared. But close. And here's what we can do. We will still do this substitution. And what it means now. 2 to the power 2x plus 6. Since these are additions, this is 2 to the power of 6, and then 2 to the power of 2x, right? Because if you multiply these expressions, the exponent parts are summarized, which is 64 times 2 to the power 2x, which is 64y squared, right? Because 2 to the power 2x is 2x squared, which is y squared. Now, 2 to the power x plus 2, this one, is 2 to the power of 2 times 2 to the power x, which is 4 times 2x, which is 4y. Right? So now we can rewrite this equation as 64y squared minus uh, 4y equals 14. And we can solve this equation for y. This is just a quadratic equation. Um, now, I probably uh, would like to skip the solution um, of this particular equation. However, I can warn you that y is supposed to be greater than zero. So any solution which is greater than zero in this particular case is good. Any one which is not obviously should be rejected. I'm just thinking if I can guess the solution to this equation, if it's solvable in some... Okay, I just divided by two. Um, well, let's just check maybe something like... now. I'm not really sure. Well, whatever the solution is, if there is a positive solution to this equation, um, then uh, then this particular 2 to the power of x equals to y can be resolved, and x would be equal to log base 2 of y. Um, it's strange. I was thinking that I was kind of putting together problems with easy solutions like this, but this seems to be a little bit too much. But, well, whatever. By the way, if there is no positive solution to this equation, maybe there are only negatives, or maybe um, there are no solutions at all. Um, well, let me try. Just <laughs> Now I'm curious myself. So we will transfer it to this form, and we will have the solution to this would be now I'm curious myself. Um, so it's 64 uh, 2 plus or minus square root of 4 uh, 4 times plus, since this is minus, so it's 128, 135. So it's 139, 139. This is not a square of anything. Now, doesn't seem to be um, an integer solution. But in any case, whenever there is a plus here, then that's definitely a good number, because the result is positive, and you can always find this. Uh, if, uh, if it's minus, then obviously the result will be negative and it should be rejected. So only the plus uh, should be here, which is 2 plus 139 divided by 64. This is y. And now you have to do the log base 2 of this thing, and that's the solution. If I didn't make any arithmetic mistake. If I did, I'm sorry. But in any case, the, the whole um, way how you uh, solve this equation is obvious in this case. All right, let's go next. 
um, log 3 of x squared plus 1 equals to log base 2 of x cubed. All right, well, the first and obvious uh, simplification of this is, since you have the log of something to some power, as you know from the properties of logarithms, this is uh, this is uh, the exponent gets basically multiplied by logarithm plus one is equal to and here we can do exactly the same thing since this is x to the third to the power of three then I can use this property of logarithms now everything would be great and dangy if I had exactly the same basis but the basis are different what should I do in this case? Well, let's just remember. There is a great formula. Log base A of B times log base B of C is equal to log base A of C. It's like if you, set, if you basically reduce by B in the middle, right? Now, what does it mean for us? Well, it means that I can always um, change the base of the logarithm, let's say it's b, um, to the base a with a proper multiplier. In this case, log c base b is equal to log c a log b a. Provided log b uh, base a is not equal to zero, this formula uh, is correct. Now, in this particular case, applicable to us, I don't like log base 3, I would like to have log base 2. So, how can I use this formula? In our case, x is c, 3 is b, so instead of this, I can put log x base 2 divided by log 3 base 2. Instead of log x base 3, I can write this. And this is a constant, so that's just the, you know, the coefficient of this. Plus 1 is equal to 3 log x 2. Now, as you see, this is a simple linear equation where log x base 2 can be substituted as y, let's say. It's linear equation, which means I can always write something like this. 2 divided by log 3 base 2 y plus 1 is equal to 3 y. Now, linear equation has obviously uh, one and only one solution in this particular case, and whatever that solution is, is y. I'm not going to, 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 to solve it, but we have to remember that y is always a log of x by the base 2. So the real answer, the x would be equal to 2 to the power of y, whatever y we get from this equation. By the way, I'm not really like finishing up every particular calculations here. But I do recommend you do it yourself completely. After you are comfortable with the way how this particular equation gets solved. Um, after that, I do recommend you to really accurately uh, complete it to, uh, to some real numbers. All right, now next. 9 to the power of 1 over x is equal to square root of 3 to the power of x. All right, let's do some manipulation, obviously. Um, it looks like 3 is the base for our uh, future transformation. So 9 is 3 squared to the power of 1x, which is actually 3 to the power of, we are multiplying, right? So it's 2 over x. That's what this is. Now this is... 3 to the power of x 
to the power of one half, right? Square root, which means this is three to x over two, and that's basically a equation, an equation which we have, right? Now, let's just think from the very beginning about what exactly our x, uh, what, what what values x can take. Well, obviously, x should not be equal to 0, because this is the domain for this. Now, for this, we know that um, exponential function um, can take any argument, and the result is always positive, so there is no extra restriction. So this is the only restrictions we have. Now, judging what we have here, we can say that since um, exponential function establishes one-to-one -one correspondence, uh, between uh, domain and the range, if functions are equal, the arguments are equal, which means 2 over x is equal x over 2. Or x squared is equal to 4, x is equal to 2, and x is equal to minus 2. These are two solutions, and both actually work fine. Both are solutions to this equation, because both satisfy this particular inequality. Now, another thing which I don't really do, I didn't do the check. Uh, when you uh, go through these problems yourself, I do recommend you not only complete all, all the solutions, but also do the checking. It's very good practice. Next problem has an interesting uh, financial sense. Let's say you have a um, 100 unit of some currency. Well, let's say dollars. You have $100. You would like to invest it in some kind of a bank, uh, and you would expect that in 10 years um, it would double using whatever the interest bank pays you. So let's assume that bank pays you interest once a year on every anniversary. So if the bank pays you an interest, let's say x, um, for instance, x can be, uh, well, if x is equal to 5%, then x is actually 0 0.05. So this is a, a fraction of the capital which will be added after the first year to whatever it was in the beginning of the first year. It will be added at the end of the second year relative to whatever it was in the beginning of the second year, etc. So, after each year, if x is the interest, not in percentage, just as a, as a fraction, if x is an interest, then your original sum, whatever the sum you have in the beginning of that year, would actually be multiplied by 1 plus x, and that would be, so if s is a beginning, then s would be transferred after a year into s multiplied by 1 plus x. So let's say a uh, bank pays you 10% interest, for instance. 10% interest, which is 0 0.1, and if you had $100 in the beginning of the year, then at the end it should add 10%, which is one-tenth of this, which is another $10. So it would be one-tenth, which is exactly $100 times 1.1. Right? That's, that's what it is. So every year your capital is multiplied by 1 plus x. So the problem is, let's say I would like to double my money in 10 years. Which bank should I choose? Which No, different banks pay different interests. So which bank should I choose to achieve that goal? Well, let's think about it. If after the first year, from uh, some amount of money, I will get uh, this amount of money multiplied by 1 plus x, then the second year, I will get s times 1 plus x. That was, was in the beginning. 
and then I should multiply it again by 1 plus x, so it will be 1 plus x squared, etc. So if I would like, in 10 years, to double my capital, then the equation which we are talking about should be 2s, which is double original amount. So from amount s, I'm going to 1, s times 1 plus x after the first year, s times 1 plus x squared after the second year, etc., up to s times 1 plus x in the tenths, uh, degree to get to double uh, amount which I have. So, my equation is basically this. So, if my original amount is $100, then in 10 years it would be, and it should be equal to $200, and I have to choose the bank which would give me the interest which is a solution to this equation. Okay, how can I solve this equation? All right. Using logarithms is easy. Well, obviously we should um, reduce it by 100. So I will have one plus x to the tenth degree is equal to 2. And what I can do now, I can take logarithm from both sides. Let's take logarithm by base 2, because then this part will be easier. Okay, so we took the logarithm from both sides. If my arguments are equal, their logarithms, uh, base 2, should also be equal to each other, right? If arguments are equal, the functions are equal. Now, I know the property of the logarithm. If you have an exponent here under the logarithm, it can be actually extracted as a multiplier. Now, log uh, 2 base 2 is 1, obviously, as we all know. This is exponent I have to use for the base 2 to get 2, right? So from here we go to log 2, 1 plus x is equal to 1 tenths. All right? Which means what? If I raise my base into this power, I will get whatever is under the logarithm. 2 to the power of 1 tenths. And x is equal to 2 to the power of 1 tenth minus 1. So that's the solution. So I have to calculate this using whatever the methodology I can. Well, nowadays we have calculators, obviously. Um, now, 2 to the power of 1 tenth will obviously be greater than 1, because if you remember, the graph for base 2 would look like this. This is 1. This is 1. And here is 1 tenth. So it's somewhere here. And they have to subtract 1, so it would be this value. So I have to calculate this value using whatever ways and means I have. Minus 1, that would be an x. So I know the x, and I can go to the bank, and I will ask, can you pay me this particular interest? If they can, well, maybe, or greater, that's, that, that's, too, too, that, that's good too, then you invest money into, uh, into this bank. If not, go to another bank. By the way, in this particular case, the original amount, 100, is called uh, present value of your investment, and the future amount, whatever you want to get in 10 years, $200. It's a future value. So basically knowing uh, present value and future value and knowing the term, which is 10 years, you can determine an interest. 
Uh, similarly, if you know the present value and term and interest, you can find out the future value. I mean, it's all interrelated, obviously. And the, the formula is S present, present value, times 1 plus uh, whatever interest is, let's put it A, whatever term is, 10, 10 years, would be equal to S future value. So this is basically equation which combines together uh, all these uh, uh, elements. So knowing we have one, two, three, four. We have four different variables here. Knowing any three is sufficient to find out the force. And that's what all the bankers are doing. They're just calculating present value, future value, interest, etc., etc. That's their main involvement. All right, and another problem is related more to physics. Um, there, is a, there is an element called radium. It's radioactive element. And radioactive elements have so-called half-life. Half-life. Now, because of radioactivity, the mass of uh, whatever original mass we have of these radioactive elements is decreasing. Let's say every year it's decreasing by, by, by a certain fraction. We will use the same methodology as with the banks, but in case of the bank, your interest actually increasing your amount. In case of radioactive decay, your amount is amount of radioactive material is decreasing by a certain percentage, whatever the percentage is. Now, half-life is basically the uh, number of years, usually uh, in, in case like this, it's, it's a year. Uh, in, in, it's calculated in years. Number of years it takes to diminish the original mass by half. So, if you have some original mass, then certain number of years it's diminished by some percentage. Every year some fraction is uh, it's reduced by some fraction. And the number of years is this. This is your future mass. This is present mass. This is future mass. So, in radioactive case, it's exactly the same as interest in the bank, except this is minus because we are decreasing the amount rather than increasing. Or, if you wish, it's a negative interest, so to speak. So, here is the problem. For radium, Obviously, this is equivalent to whatever I wrote before, right? It was present here and future there, I just, just divided by present value. So, in case of radium, in 1,601 years, amount will decrease by half, which means this ratio is equal to one half. So, question is, what's the fraction of uh, losing uh, mass of radioactive radium in one year. Well, this is a very similar problem. Um, you have the term, you have to, uh, you have this ratio, so you have to find one minus x. I mean, you have to find x, and 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 here it is. Let's just again apply logarithm in both cases, and I will use also logarithm uh, base two. Uh, of 1 minus x1601 is equal to log 2 of 1 half. Well, obviously this is equal to minus 1, right? 2 to the power of minus 1 will give you 1 half. Now this is 1601 log of 1 minus x, base 2. So from here, having this equation, I know, I can calculate what's my one sixty one times log two one minus x equals to minus one. So obviously, 
log 2, 1 minus x is equal to minus 1 over 1601. Okay, I, I hope you're not discouraged by this minus sign uh, because uh, we are subtracting from 1. If you remember, log logarithm of 1 with any base is equal to 0, but if you go less than 1, this is y is equal to log base 2 of x, right? So this is 1, and log is equal to 0. Less than 1 argument will give you negative log. So everything is fine. So all you have to do right now is basically to say the following. 1 minus x is equal to 2 to the power minus 1, 16, or 1. So x is equal to 1 minus 2 to the power 16 or 1. So that's the solution. This is how uh, much, what's the fraction actually of decreasing the amount of radioactive radium uh, happens in one year, considering that 16 or 1 years is the half-life of radium. Well, that concludes actually all the problems I wanted to present to you today. Um, as you saw, some of them are really kind of practical. The banking problem is practical, very practical, and uh, the physical uh, problem is also quite practical. So you have to know um, what exactly is uh, the reduction of mass in radioactive case. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. I do remind you to go through these problems again. Um, go to the very end of every problem, get the solution, and check this solution. And as usually, I do encourage everybody to check in and register on unizor.com as a student, have somebody as a supervisor or a parent um, enroll you in, in whatever the course uh, they decide and check your um, marks on exams. It's very important. Um, and, uh, well, until the next set of problems. Thank you very much.